Greetings, Starfighter. You have been recruited by the Star League to defend the frontier against Sewer and the Kodan Armada. Get ready. Prepare for blast. Your Fortress of Solitude. Greetings, program. Glad you're alive. Your Sanctum Sanctorum. Systems is futile. Welcome. This should be the first trial. This is where the fun begins. Proof positive that geeks have inherited the earth. It's your dad. It's time to get your geek on. You will complete me. With Dave Gramellion. All right. Welcome here, San Antonio. Welcome here, Texas. Welcome here, United States and all points beyond. Canada, United Kingdom, Ireland, Philippines, Viva Mexico, and all points beyond all over the globe that are listening to us right now. I am Dave Gramillion, and welcome to Get Your Geek On. This is the premier talk radio show for Star Wars, Star Trek, DC, Marvel, eSports, video gaming, really all things geek that have dominated this little world of ours. You see, geek is not what it was 20 or 30 years ago. Geek is in. Geek is very in. Geek is now the mainstream, and we are here to talk the latest and greatest that is geek Right here on 9.30 a.m. The Answer Talk Radio and 9.30 a.m. The Answer dot com. This is season two, episode number 46. 46 episodes into the year, which means we are only six away from the uh, epic anniversary and only two away from the 100th anniversary, 100th episode extravaganza. Wait, 100th anniversary? <laughs> One, 100 anniversaries. Well, we've been celebrating our anniversary what, just every show, so why not? It's our 100th anniversary. Tonight, we're going to have a very special guest call in here shortly. He is the Legion M co-founder and CEO Paul Scanlon. He'll be telling us what Legion M is and why you should really, really, really be paying attention to it. Marvel News. There is no way I can let this show get by without talking about that Venom trailer. Yeah. Cruz has stuff to say about that. Uh, it, it, it may have something to do with the symbiote. It, it just it just might, but we'll get, we'll get into that. Also, we have some Star Trek news to talk about as well. We haven't had Trek news for quite a while, but now they've given us something to talk about. And yeah, we're going to talk about that. They've got to quite f- a bit give us well. a few things. More than, a, more than a few things. And not only that, but Star Wars decided to break some news this week as well. What is Star Wars Resistance? We'll tell you about that. And James Cameron decided to open his mouth again about superhero movies again. And we're going to talk about that again. Mm. All righty. So let me make sure that um, I introduce my partners in crime here in the studio with me. First to my left, your right, as you look across the radio dial, you will see the man who is the current Grand Admiral and Grand Poobah for the Star Wars Society of San Antonio. Back from his hiatus, he is back in studio. He is our minion. Oh, my crickets, how I've missed the... Minion, how you doing? I'm doing great. And, Kate, you know, since it's the eve of Infinity War, I happen to be wearing my Captain America costume. Perfect. Yeah, it's been going on all weekend, and it's it's as mammoth as everybody oh, yes. thought it was going to be. <laughs> Goodness. And if you look further to my left, your right, as you look across the radio dial, you will see the man spinning the ones and zeros. He is our sound prognosticator. He is Goose. How appropriate. It helps to be the producer, doesn't it? It does, very much so. <laughs> how you doing, Goose? I'm doing all right. How are you? Outstanding. I'm pumped, man. There is so much to do. There is so much to talk about. And we have a guest already on the line. So let's just kick it off. Let's go ahead and bring on the man himself, the co-founder and chief executive officer of Legion M. He is Paul Scanlon. Paul, how you doing, sir? Hey, good. How are you guys? Thanks for having me on. Uh, very and you make me sound so important when you introduce me. Man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good. It, it sounds to me like we've been hired on as his publicist. Yeah, yeah, I think so. i got to take you guys with me everywhere I go. Okay, offer, offer accepted. All right, we're gone. No problem. <laughs> now, Legion, <laughs> Legion M is described as the world's first fan-owned entertainment company. Uh, what exactly does that mean? <laughs> No, well, you know, it, it means exactly that. I mean, we are owned by fans and uh, from day one. And I don't mean 
you know, me and my co-founder and our executive team, of course, we're fans, but we're owned by a legion, a community of passionate entertainment fans. And our whole idea with Legion M is that we think an entertainment company owned by fans is fundamentally better than an entertainment company that's owned by Wall Street. And yeah. today, most of our entertainment, uh, you know, through consolidation, uh, they're they're owned by consolidated corporations that are ultimately owned by Wall Street. And um, so we started two years ago, and with the goal to unite fans together to to take over Hollywood. So you guys make movies then? Yeah. Well, we yeah we uh, we're in the entertainment business, so we you know we're investing in and producing and backing entertainment projects that includes movies, uh, TV shows. We even have a virtual reality interview series project that, uh, that we've developed. So, uh, yeah, we're across the board. Now, Dean Devlin, who is the producer of Stargate and Independence Day and so on, he recently called Legion M the ultimate grassroots company. And what I love about that is that he's not referring to these these hedge fund managers and these investment bankers. Uh, He's talking about the everyday common person that is listening to our show right now. Isn't that correct? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, Legion M, so we're we're open to everyone. Um, you can join for free, so you don't even need to invest if you want to participate. Um, but if you join our computer, our, our community, you do have the option to own shares. And so periodically we'll open a round of finance um, and then people can invest. And once you become an owner, I mean, this is it's 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 crowdfunding, but it's like next level crowdfunding, because a lot of people don't realize, you know, with Kickstarter and Indiegogo and all these things that have been fantastic. Um, up until two years ago, they weren't allowed to sell you shares. So you could invest or back a project and get a coffee mug or a T-shirt or some type of rewards or get the DVD, uh, but you weren't allowed to own equity in it. And so what Legion M is doing is we're allowing fans from day one to own equity in the company. And the company is is producing um, ultimately – like a wide slate of projects that we're that we're backing, um, and we're also you know we think of the the company as a community first. So we 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 put on a lot of events and we bring people together. We're we're um, we have a movie with Dean Devlin that's coming out uh, next week, and to support the the film, we are organizing meetups all across the country. Actually, I, I just looked, and there's one in San Antonio. Uh, for the film opening where Legion M community members come together, meet up, bring friends and family, go see the movie that we're all a part of and have an investment in, and then go grab a drink or a coffee afterwards. And what we found is that's really fun to do. And like seeing our movie together with, you know, our, our co-owners is really fun, but it's also good business. It's good for the project that we're backing. So in fact, it's I'm, been great, and we love working with Dean. Now, I believe that the San Antonio meetup, there are even be free goodie bags for people that attend. So it's really great that you can walk in, hang out with, with people, and see this movie, and then walk out with something as well. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, you know, when we, like, when people make an investment, you know, we take that really seriously. And our, like, we're, we're growing, um, a company that we think can have massive value in the future. But where we, what we also pay attention to is the emotional ROI, that people that are joining can be a part of a community and link up and connect with other like-minded people and have these great experiences. We, we did a, a really fun activation at Sundance this year where we had one of our films uh, not only got into Sundance this year, which we were really excited about but it ended up being um one of the most talked about films at sundance uh and is currently the best reviewed film uh from sundance that's our our project mandy very cool Uh, that's really cool and that's the one with nicholas cage in it if i recall that's that's wonderful (laughs) now now it still sounds like i need what by common person it still sounds like i need 500 or a thousand dollars to invest i mean if i have 10 or 20 bucks I mean, surely that uh, is that going to be uh, part of the target on it? Can I invest ten or twenty bucks? 
Well, so we we set the minimum. So remember, you can join for free. Mm -hmm. You can, um, if you want to invest, and again, we're really transparent and, you know, not high pressure about this. So if people want to invest, it's completely up to them. Uh, The minimum investment right now is $100. And the reason we made it that number is that's about the right number to, because there's a lot of paperwork and documentation on our side that goes in and management, because these are real shares. It's not like, you know, um, you know, you, you own shares in the company and we have obligations to provide information to you and it's all SEC regulated. But one thing I want to point out, so our goal, like if you look at our, our name is Legion M and our M and our logo has a bar over it, which represents the Roman numeral for 1 million. Our goal is to unite 1 million fans together. And if, if everyone put in $100, we'd have $100 million to invest in projects that have a million people emotionally and financially invested in them. And we think that could literally make us one of the most influential entertainment companies on the planet. And right now, two years after starting the company, the average investor is it puts about $500 in. Mm-hmm. So remember, the minimum is 100 That's what most people put in. Um, but the average is 500 So when we reach our goal, and I'm convinced we'll get there, We'll have five hundred million dollars to invest in projects that have a million people emotionally and financially invested. That's insane. Now y'all have invested in uh, Colossal, which had was starring Anne Hathaway, and then Mandy, that was yep. previously mentioned with Nicolas Cage, and now you have yep. Bad Samaritan coming out right around the corner on May the fourth, and that stars David Tennant and Carrie Conkin, yep. which is the voice of Friday in Age of Ultron and Captain America: Civil War. Tell me about Bad Samaritan and just how excited y'all are for this one. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so we we met up with Dean Devlin. I mean, we're fans of his anyway, and we know that a lot of our community uh, are Stargate fans or Independence Day fans and, you know, the Librarians, which is one of Dean's show. Um, So we hooked up with Dean, and uh, and we really just hit it off. I mean, Legion M and Dean were made for each other. I mean, he's, he's, you know, he's one of Hollywood's biggest producers, but he's, moving in a different direction now and realizing that these big studio films aren't the best are isn't the best model anymore and it's not the best outlet for his creativity and so bad samaritan is this amazing project um it's independently produced by dean's company electric entertainment and independently distributed so this is one of hollywood's biggest producers independently producing and and distributing his own project and so we got involved um it's uh the way i would describe it it's like a modern hitchcock uh film it's a thriller in the horror genre but it's not like a gory horror genre or horror picture it's a uh more of a, a thriller david tennant is beyond amazing in this film super scary uh, even better than, you know, his Kilgrave character. Uh, oh. um, and the cast, Robbie Sheehan and Carlito and Carrie and Jackie, it's just, it's an amazing project. And, um, yeah, we're excited because we're, you know, we're working directly with Dean. And it's, um, you know, what's nice about it is Dean's been, Dean totally gets our company. And he's been very... Um, uh, accommodating you know we've done a lot of like free screenings where we invite our community to come out and they can bring their friends out um he's really uh supportive of like you know you mentioned we're doing all these meetups and putting this cool swag uh bag together for people that come out to a meetup and then we're going to do a, have a special surprise uh for everyone after the opening weekend uh with dean so yeah it's been really amazing well, I, I have to ask, I mean, all of these projects now that y'all come out with in just the last couple of years that y'all have, have helped to, to bring to life, but if you could put together a dream team, a director, an actor, and an actress, and y'all are in the driver's seat, it's a Legion M funded project, but y'all get to make this, this dream team come true, which three people would you want to bring together? Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer that question a little bit differently. So what I'm going to say, because one, one thing that we really uh, take is important to us is that, you know, Jeff and I and our executive team, we all have our opinion. Um, but the way we drive our company is based on the opinions and the voices that we get from our community. 
So before I would answer that question, I would want to, I would literally put it out to vote. And I would, I mean, I could speculate on who I think, you know, would, would come through. I think Guillermo del Toro might be up there <laughs> as a director. And we were actually uh, inches away from investing in Shape of Water. Guillermo is a big fan of Legion M, and we're obviously big fans of his. But, but truly, like, my dream project is a project that with the community we, we discover and we produce together and, you know, not just with the financial backing, but, you know, it's a, it's a project that comes up organically through the Legion, maybe one of our members or one of our uh, community um, and we all rally behind it and and make it happen. So where where can people learn more about Legion M? And more importantly, what's the next big project? What's on the horizon? Yeah, yeah, sure. So uh, yeah, they can go to legionm.com, um, and that's just uh, how it how it sounds. L e g i o n m as in million dot com. And uh, you know what we do on our website, you can you can sign up there. You can also, if you're interested. You can join one of our meetups. Um, as I mentioned, we have one in San Antonio. I mean, we have them all over the country. I mean, literally, there's over 100 organized. Uh, thousands of people have already signed up to go. Um, so it's, you know, it's a, it's a great way to, like, meet other co-owners and learn more about it. And, you know, what we tell people is, look, if you're, you know, you can join for free and then, you know, meet up with other people and find out what they think of it. And, uh you know, and, and get their opinion before um, before you make the uh, the investment. Um, if people do want to invest, they can make a reservation. We're not open for investment right now, but we're going to open another round uh, in the near future. And so, you, if you want to guarantee your spot, you can make a reservation. It, it's non-binding, um, but it's there. And then uh, I would say new projects. We have a couple of uh, TV series that we're developing. Um, and some new announcements that we'll be making there. We also, uh, our film Mandy that we discussed earlier, uh, will have a theatrical release in the fall. And that's a, uh, that's a really, really great movie. It's, I mean, it's, it's a very intense movie. Uh, and it's, it's the exact type of movie to go see with a group of people, uh, that are excited and energized about it. An intense so movie with Nicolas day. Cage. Yeah. I mean, that, that goes together really well. This movie was made for Nicolas Cage. I mean, honestly, I think it, it'll go down in history as probably his best, one of his best performances. And Panos Cosmatos, the director, he did uh, Beyond the Black Rainbow. And this film is uh, it's really a masterpiece. And uh, one of the things that's really special about it, and uh, sadly, um, unfortunately, uh, it's got a Johan Johansson uh, soundtrack. It's the Johan Johansson heavy metal soundtrack. And as you may know, Johan uh, recently passed away. Um, you know, this is one of his last projects. And uh, anyway, we're, we're excited to share it with the world because um, not only is it an amazing uh, piece of uh, creative, um, but I think it's, it's really unique, too. I mean, one of the things that Legion M wants to represent is we want, you know, because we're owned by fans and not Wall Street, we want to be able to take chances and we want to be able to, like, back really creative projects. Like, we talked about Colossal. I mean, Colossal is it's an amazing movie, but it's not a movie that the studios would have made uh, because it doesn't have a, it's not a proven franchise. It doesn't have a fan base already, but it's, it's a very worthwhile project. And, you know, it made many of the top 10 films in 2017. And so we're proud of it. And the same thing uh, with Mandy. You know, it's like this isn't a film that probably the studios would have made, but, you know, the fans will. And now it's the number one best-reviewed film at Sundance. Go figure. Awesome. Well, Paul, we want to thank you for taking time out of your day to talk to us here. We've been talking with Legion M co-founder and CEO Paul Scanlon here on 930 AM, The Answer, and Get Your Geek On. Sir, Sir, thanks for calling in. You have a good rest of the day. All right. Thank you, guys. We appreciate your support. Onward and upward. Awesome. Thank you, sir. So a, right, Ni a Nicolas Cage movie with a heavy metal soundtrack that is intense. Well, this seems pretty much tailored for Nick. Yeah. And then, and then you have a Bad Samaritan movie in mm -hmm. which David Tennant is scarier than when he was Kilgrave. Interesting. Wow. Now, I am a member. I am not an investor as of yet, but I am a member of Legion M. Yeah. Uh, disclaimer, I, I'm, I'm a member, too. I, yeah, well, oh, oh, John Buscardi wants a T-shirt. Oh, okay. 
a, a Legion M T-shirt. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he can get. Didn't he give us? He gave me this one. I'm pretty sure. So possibly he can keep one, keep one for himself. Uh, all right. Well, that being said, let's go ahead and we got to talk about some Marvel news. Go. Go, 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 go. This is brought to you by our friends over at Laser Legend. Laser Legend is on the north side of San Antonio off of 1604 and Lookout Road. Not quite to Rolling Oaks Mall and not quite to I-35 either. You will find that they have a 4,000 square foot arcade waiting for you there. A couple of air hockey tables. They've got Star Trek Pinball, Jurassic Park, The Walking Dead, Star Wars Battle Pod, driving games, shooting games, and of course, you know, ticket games as well. You will also find that they have a two floor laser tag arena as well as indoor miniature golf. And all of this is under one roof. We love these guys out yes. there. Laser Legend is a lot of fun. So get your game on, get your laser tag on, get your glow golf on at Laser Legend. And get your photon torpedo on. No. But not anymore. Anymore? Not anymore. Not anymore. Oh. Yeah, I know. Okay. I'm kind of bummed about that, oh, too. Well, yeah. But still, they got a lot of great food options out they there. They do. Their okay. quesadillas are good. Quesadillas, pizzas. They have hot dogs. They, I mean, it, it's a great place to go, go and just hang out for the afternoon. Yep. All righty. So this is this is kind of Marvel news. It's not Marvel Cinematic Universe news. It's Marvel Sony news. Yeah, so take it for what it's worth. And we finally got a full-on Venom trailer with Venom in it. We did. And... Uh, first of all, it looks like it takes yeah. place in San Francisco, first of all. Yeah. Think so? It, it's kind of hard to tell. The, the bridge makes it look yeah, like San Francisco. Could I be. Left my All right, so no Spider-Man, but we knew that. We knew that. that that was coming. Okay, whatever. I guess they can make that work somehow. It's but, never worked in the past. There has never been a Venom thing without Spider-Man ever. But l- l- let me ask you this though: What is up with them pronouncing symbiote? <laughs> oh. Did that jump out to anybody else? Uh, like yeah, the very first yeah. time and every single time I couldn't focus on the rest of the like, trailer because of that? Yeah, like the whole the whole rest of the trailer. I'm like, did she say what I thought she said? Well, Somebody's she, probably never seen Deep Space Nine ever she, in their she life. She said it twice. Well, keep in mind, it's still just a teaser. I mean, it's still the trailer. Yeah. But they and, could probably and, fix this stuff in production. Which they, they have before. You heard uh, in Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, there mm-hmm. was part-time mm-hmm. and part-time. Right. You know, they're, they're uh, Phantom Menace. In the Phantom Menace trailer, uh, Padme is shooting, and she says, get to your ships! Mm-hmm. And then in the movie, it's get to your ships. Yeah. Yeah, so they can do different things with it, but I, that just stuck out to me as just being really weird. It's symbiote. It's symbiote. It's not symbiote. I, uh, okay, well, let's move on. What, yeah, else, let's talk what about, else did you like about the movie? Let's trailer. talk about Venom himself. Because well, this is more our... slobber. <laughs> yeah, was it just me, or did he look like Venom's reject? Uh, not Venom, Spawn's rejected animation. <laughs> oh, that's saying a lot. I, I was waiting for a clown in a cheerleader outfit. I really was. Ugh. I mean, I just <laughs> it, like really. That that that's how you're gonna roll, huh? Well, well, it, did it, you, it, did it, you it, get the animators who did California Raisins to do that? Is, is that what this is? Well, the only thing is, I thought, okay, well, you know, um, Tom Hardy's really got a pretty good little. What kind of accent would that be? Would that be a New York accent or? I don't know, it was, it was there, I'm but it was like, sure. after listening to it a couple of times, like, okay. And then after a third time, I'm like, okay, this is getting kind of annoying. <laughs> yeah, I'm not really sure. I can't quite place his accent. Yeah, he and Eddie, for some Neither reason. Neither can he. Yeah. Like, I, and for some reason, he just kind of comes across as annoying. Now, I like this. You can join in, in our chat, by the way, at facebook.com slash GYGO radio, where Shannon Lynn is yes. in the chat right now. She Hi, she Shannon. is she is Mara Jade, by the way. And I like when she says, when people say nuclear instead of nuclear. You know, like when Lex Luthor said nuclear in in that, oh no, I'm sorry, that movie never happened. Yeah, it's a yeah kind of, I didn't bother seeing it either. So. Oh my goodness. I, I just... I don't. I don't know. Now I'm. I'm the guy who is the eternal optimist and will give movies the benefit of the doubt because Heath Ledger as the Joker. Come on, that'll never work, right? Yeah. Michael Keaton as Batman. That'll never work, right? But at the same time, th- this is our first chance to see Venom, and I was like, uh, I got one for you. The Human Torch is Captain America. Hey, hey, uh, hey, and I'm right here. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I just. Mm. Here's here's something here's the there should be some constants in the universe. One, f- fire is will burn you. 
water is wet, and Venom has to, the symbiote has to be with Spider-Man first. Yeah, this is, all right. So he has to slobber more. Strike one, no Spider-Man. Strike two, it's Sony. Sony does not have the best track record when it comes to movies or superheroes. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm looking at you, Ghostbusters, in 2016. I'm looking at you, Amazing Spider-Man 2. I mean, just, it, it hasn't worked out that well in the past. I'm willing to give it the benefit of the doubt for the time being. But, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not, not all that optimistic. Just, yeah. I think disappointment is the, is the best word that you can sum up that trailer. Yeah. All right, so that, that, that's our cue here. We have a hard break to go to at the bottom of half of the hour news here. Uh, coming up, we've got some Star Wars news, some Star Trek news, and we got to touch on James Cameron. What is he thinking? Oh, I can't wait to get into this segment. My goodness. So we'll be right back here on 9.30 a.m. The Answer and 9.30 a.m. The Answer.com. Welcome back from the bottom of the hour news break. This is Get Your Geek On on 9.30 a.m. The Answer Talk Radio, 9.30 a.m. The Answer dot com. I am Dave Gramillion, and if you missed the first half of the show, we went through that Venom trailer like a hot knife through butter. Good God almighty, we had to talk about that. And we also had on as our special guest the Legion M co-founder and CEO Paul Scanlon to talk about their uh, Mandy movie, which is coming up this fall with Nicolas Cage. Talk about Bad Samaritan, which is coming out May the 4th with uh, David Tennant. And to talk about their movie Colossal, which came out last year with Anne Hathaway and future projects and how you can get on, on it over at LegionM.com. All righty. Well, I don't think there's uh, any reason to beat around the bush on this one. we got a lot more news to cover. Let's start by talking about some Star Trek news, shall we? Yeah. If you see Klingons, better make sure that your face is out. And if you in the blades, rep your uniform, cause it's future chic. Mm. All the haters know, we got photon torpedoes. Fill the Vulcan up if you're not from Rocky. Listen, stay with me now, live long and prosper it. Just be me up, Scott, eh? Just be me up, Scott, eh? Just be me up, Scott, eh? You got to care, guys. Alrighty. So we finally have some Star Trek Discovery news that we can talk about. And yeah, we, and we do have quite a bit, including. Did you see the Enterprise? I did, and I saw that the I saw the video that they put out on Thursday. Yes, they've decided to completely revamp the old Enterprise, and now it's the new old Enterprise, and it looks all shiny and. Actually, it's the it's, new it's, new it's, old it, Enterprise. It, it's blue and well, it's stuff. it's got lights. Yeah, it has lights, and they're blue, and it's in space. The warp nacelles are blue; they're not orange anymore. It's 2018. Yeah. No, yeah. Okay. I, I'm not gonna mess. Up. Eh, okay. All right. It is what it is. But yeah. Now they're bringing back mm. Pike and Spock mm. because God forbid a show should stand on its own. God forbid that in this vast star fleet that they have, that you, you know, okay. Oh, okay. That banging <laughs> you're hearing is Goose. Goose. I imagine you would you would like to say a word or two on this. Here we go. Oh, you're going to let me? You may fire when ready. Okay, look. There's a saying in this world that it's better to keep your mouth shut and make people think you are stupid than open it and prove them right. My big thing with Discovery from the very get-go was this. You want it to take place in the Prime Universe, that's fine. You want to take place 10 years before the original series, that's fine. Keep the Enterprise as far away from the Discovery as you possibly can. Because as, as we all know, Star Trek geeks are not fun when you mess with their canon. You thought Star Wars fans were crazy when you went and destroyed the EU? Oh, dear Lord. Let me tell you, as soon as they talked about mutiny on board the Shinzo, the geeks were there. Well, see, in season two, episode five, they said that there was no mutiny in the history of Starfleet, which by the time the season was over, you got through that and everything was fine. But, but this is 2018, not 1966. So the Enterprise is going to look different because it has to for HD filming and whatnot. You want to do the Enterprise in the books? That's fine. You want to do it in comics? That's fine because you have a lot more creative freedom than you do in a television show, especially in an HD television show. So 
guys, you'd have been better off if you didn't actually incite the, the geeks that are out there that are going to tear you to shreds. You're having a hard enough time keeping your base fandom happy as it is, and now you're going to put the Enterprise and Pike and Spock on television in 2018? We've had two Spocks over the course of the years. We had Zachary Quinto and Leonard Nimoy. And, I, and of course, we've had young Spock, um, of course, in the Star Trek movies as well. But we don't need another Spock. I'm not happy that we have another Sarek as it is. I can deal with Sarek. Sp Spock and Pike? No, 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 no. Stop it. Just stop it. Fan service is, you're not actually servicing the fans by doing this. In Enterprise, it was cute to bring in the Ferengi. It was cute to bring in the Romulans. That was cute. Okay, I, we could dig that. But now, with Discovery, it's a little too much, guys. Have Discovery stand on its own. Have people think that you don't know about canon, which you actually do because you proved that in the end of the season, and that you actually care about it, instead of actually showing them that you don't give a crap about the 1966 show. Hey, Goose. Yes? Can you do me a favor real quick? What's that? Can you stop holding it all in and just, you know, really let it out and tell people how you feel? Because I'll try. I mean, all this holding back, man, it's not good for you. I'll, I'll try. It's just not. Now, I will say, on the bright spot, the guy who they got to cast as Captain Pike, very good choice. He was the guy who played ba Black Bolt in Inhumans, which means Inhumans went away. Thank God. Jonathan Frakes is coming back to direct episode two of season two of Star Trek Discovery. Really? Thank God. Yes. Thank the great bird of the galaxy. <laughs> but seriously, just... You want to include a triple here and there? That's fine. You want to do the mirror universe? That's fine. You want to bring in Harry Mudd? Okay. Hey. Keep Kirk, Spock, McCoy, the Enterprise, Pike, number one, all of those away from the show because you're going to do nothing but hack your fans off. And it's not like these fans are just passing Star Trek on the television screen. No, you want these fans to pay money to watch your show. Pay money to watch your show. Or in these two cases, bum off somebody who is paying money. That'd be nice. Yeah. And it's not happening. Um, but no, if you want us to pay money to see Star Trek, make it something we want to watch. Make it something that isn't going to insult us by just bringing out the raging nerds in us that want to call you on your crap. Because we want to. We held back because it was okay. But now you're giving us reasons to, and you don't need that in your life right now. Well, already then. Okay, thank you. That also being said, we have some other Star Trek news that came out, including <laughs> two new Trek movies are on the way. <clears throat> yes. So, so, so it, what do we know about these ones? Very little. Jim Giannopoulos, who is the chairman and CEO of Paramount. Right. Remember, CBS has the show, but Paramount has the movies. Right. And he said that they are teaming up with Skydance, who did the first three new Star Trek movies. The Abrams verse. The Abrams verse, and they have two more Star Trek movies that they're working on, as well as a Top Gun reboot with huh? Tom Cruise. It's not a reboot; it's Top Gun Two. I go. Well, that's hey, I got this straight out of Variety, and they said it's a reboot. Okay, so for the for the new are these spinoff movies, or they're just is this going to be no? It's going to be a, I think it's going to be actually continuing the story. Okay, good. Well, I mean, it's Star Trek. I mean, you don't have to have the Enterprise. Okay, true. Just like Deep Space Nine, Voyager. So it has this is what this one not have Kirk or Spock or anyone? I don't know. Okay. Well, now here's something that we also know. Okay. One of these sequels, we don't know which one or how it's going to tie into anything. This is all very, 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 very recently breaking news. Will be directed by S.J. Clarkson. Yes. Who is a director and writer and also a woman. I'm okay with that. Dun, what, dun, dun. what has she done before? Ah, well, I'm sure we're all dying Because this know. probably is not like a DCEU issue with getting somebody with no experience she, whatsoever. She directed episodes of the following series. Collateral. Okay. The Defenders. Ah. Ooh. Jessica Jones. There you go. Ooh. Orange is the New Black. Okay. Uh -huh. Hostages. Okay. Bates Motel. Okay. Dexter. Uh -huh. Okay. Heroes. Okay. Yeah. Remember to save the... Heroes or Heroes Reborn? Born? No, Heroes. Okay. Uh, and also Life on Mars. Okay, so she okay, can she's got some credit, some she's, credibility, and she has some differenting, differentiating things within the genre. Differentiating, yeah. Shut up. Now, so far, all of these are series as opposed to uh, a motion picture, but she does have four nominations for uh, best single drama, drama of the year, best direction of a comedy series, and so on and so forth. She directed some of Orange Is the New Black, which is fine. I mean, so she's got some chops. She's got some skills. 
for sure. So that that's encouraging to me. I'm very, very, very happy about that. This is kind of the polar opposite from what the DCEU announced last week when they were going to have uh, a woman writer and director. Yeah, because we, don't know things, we know nothing about her. And they hadn't done anything. Right. They literally had not done anything as but opposed to this woman. She's got some credentials. She's put in the time. She's done. She's proven herself. She's paid her dues. And now she's getting this big time so shot. It, so this could very well be a Voyager movie. It's entirely possible. I can't. Or just, or just its own little spinoff. For all we know, we, we really... It could be anything at this point. We, yeah. we really don't know anything about it. Um, we, they did not confirm that Tarantino was going to be working on one of the films. Yeah, the, either as a writer, producer, director, or whatever. They haven't confirmed. Wow. They haven't denied. They haven't done anything. Goose, we're going to have to wrap some duct tape around your head so it doesn't explode. Or at least if it does explode, breathe, it's, goose, it's, it, it's contained or something. Breathe slowly into the nose, out through the mouth. I have a feeling Goose would like to say something about Tarantino. Just, just a little bit. There. Okay, look. There we go. <laughs> you want to throw in a little profanity on my Star Trek because it's on a streaming service? That's perfectly well and good. Star Trek has never been known for its graphic violence, for its language. Star Trek, by and large, has been a family-friendly show. I started watching Star Trek when I was seven years old. Started watching Next Generation on it when I was nine, and I've seen every episode of every series since. I've, in fact, I've never seen every episode of the original series and all thirteen movies because I am that kind of guy. I don't need a whole lot of graphic violence. I don't need a whole lot of profanity. I need something I can bring my friends to and one day a family to it so I can have them enjoy the same thing that I've enjoyed since I was a child. It needs to be something that it can be intergenerational and violence and profanity. Just don't do it. So if you want to bring in J.J. Abrams, great. Awesome. Woo. -hoo. You want to bring back Jonathan Frakes? Even better. Patrick Stewart? Sure. Not a problem. Dean Devlin? Oh, please. But Quentin Tarantino? No, I don't care if that's the only way Patrick Stewart ever comes back as Captain Jean-Luc Picard, who is an Englishman who with a French name. What is up with that? But no to Tarantino. He needs to not even be involved in Star Trek whatsoever. Hey, Goose, do me a favor. Yes. For the love of God, man, you stop holding back. Stop <laughs> keeping it in, man. Well, Let us know how you really This is Get Your feel. Geek On with David Gramillion, not David Gramillion and Friends. So I hold back a <laughs> lot. <laughs> <laughs> and for that, we say thank you. With that being said, let's go ahead and move on because there's more breaking news that came out this week. Although from the other side of the coin, we're talking about some Star Wars news. I'm looking forward to completing your training. In time, you will call me. All righty, so we want to also thank a new sponsor that has come on board here. That is Dragon's Lair Alamo Ranch. Alamo Ranch, of course, being on the, I guess you can call it the true west side of town. It's right out there where 151 meets 1604. Way west. You may believe, uh, you may already know about the Dragon's Lair on Fredericksburg Road. This is over now on the west side of San Antonio. Completely different location, but still a lot of the great comics, games, figures, tournaments and everything that you've come to love and uh, respect from Dragon's Lair, you can now find at the Alamo Ranch location. Oof. Alrighty, so Star Wars Resistance has long been rumored to be the new series that is coming out from the mind of Dave Filoni. Lo and behold, the announcement came out that the new series is indeed Star Wars Resistance, so please hold your surprise and your shock. However, the big news to come out of this is that it will take place in the period between Return of the Jedi and The Force Awakens, close to The Force Awakens. Right. It is described as having a <clears throat> new anime-like style. So we're totally going different compared to what, uh, what we've seen so far with Clone Wars and, and Rebels. Well, yes, and already right now, people are already debating as to whether or not Resistance is already better than Rebels and Clone Wars. We haven't even seen anything yet. Come well, on, people, clearly it's better. Uh, it's it's better already. I'm sorry. God, Ewoks, and droids. Hey, come on, that was awesome. No, uh, we love that stuff. Now, guess what? There were no there were no space battles and there were no lightsabers in Ewoks or droids. Or droids there might have been, but Ewoks there was not. Now, when you think of anime like style and Dave Filoni, there's only one series that comes to mind: The Last Airbender. Hmm. The Last Airbender was anime like when you when you look at the action in there. And it was also, Dave Filoni was heavily involved with that. 
Now, one of the things that the fanboys love, have you seen the anime, it, a true anime short video about uh, a TIE fighter? Yes, and that was amazing. That sort of thing? So I have a question. Uh, what series was it that you said it was like? That would be The Last Airbender. Greetings, you worthless peasants. I am Grey Delisle, the voice of Azula, and so many others. Yes, indeed. That would be her. <laughs> Dave, why are you blushing? <laughs> oh, my, oh. My, my favorite line from that fr- my favorite line from that series from Azula is when she's talking about her mother and this is the one time Azula really starts to open up a little bit and she says mm-hmm. talks about her mother and she says my, my own mother called me a monster she was right of course but still it hurt you want to you want to see Dave blush let's see Dave blush okay hang on well David you seem like a very very bad kitty to me meow you do realize this is radio, and not a lot of people can see me blush. But we do we we do uh, broadcast all of our shows on Facebook Live and archive them on YouTube, which you can find at tinyurl.com slash gygo YouTube. Okay, thank you for that. Okay. that, that that's awesome. But so, getting back to resistance. Yeah, so getting back to resistance here. So I picture kind of a last Airbender style. They're talking about it being revolving around an X-wing pilot. So you're going to get space battles and explosions. It sounds to me like this is what the fanboys have been looking for. They yeah. they want hardcore action. They're they're tired of you know character development and good stories and uh, people you can really emotionally invest in. They just want Michael Bay stuff. Well, from what we what we kind of are getting out of this, it's kind of it's obviously between Return of the Jedi and Force Awakens, right? Yeah, so maybe, maybe, it's maybe, close, so maybe to, we close can, to the Force Awakens. So maybe we can kind of see just what exactly happened and how the First Order rose and all no. that other good stuff. No, no, no. no I'm thinking it's going to be pew pew explosions. Well, I mean, I like to see how the First Order got started. I'm pretty sure they did some bake sales. I'm sure there's going to be a book about that. Well, yeah, there, there was, but still. what would they have at their bake sale? Like Wookie cookies? Maybe you know, maybe some, they're just some a little bit milk. chewy. Yeah, a little, some blue milk. So, some some oh some some, gr- some yeah. green yeah. milk. Some green milk. Yeah, something like Yo, that. No, as long as you don't have the thing there where you have to <laughs> milk it. No, it's fresh squeezed. I mean, that's the yeah, that's the best way to but get there it. There you go. It's, oh, it's right gosh. there. It's pasteurized right okay, there. Here we go. Oh my! A first yeah. order bake sale. <laughs> Our sales are electrifying. <laughs> Well, they had to pay for that, you know, Star Killer base somehow. Yeah, that's true. And so, you know, so you think that Michael Bay is going to direct a couple of these? I, no. I, well, I wouldn't be surprised. I'm telling you, I think this is what they really want. I think, I think the fanboys are because cr- if you look, everybody loves that little anime short. They love it. They that, can't get well, enough well, of that it. That was amazing how they did it. Though. But I mean, the guys n- spent a whole year just working on and it. And there's no dialogue whatsoever. No. And it's just explosions and, and dogfights and, of course, the Empire winning. Yeah. Like like one TIE fighter takes out a whole cruiser because they're, it's, they're just, it's just cool like that. That was good. Well, but if you really look at it, it was... Can we link that up later on? Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll link it up. But yeah. uh, I was... I was very much surprised that they're gonna they're gonna go in this direction, and also that they're not going live action. Again, live action's a lot more money. Yes, yeah. it is. But at the same time, it's something that just about everyone's delved into, except for Star Wars. Star Trek had animated. Yes. For a, a, for a little while. For like twenty episodes. For like twenty. Hey, but but here's still the thing: it episodes. was original cast. Most it was mostly original cast. Yes, it was. Marvel has gone live action. DC has gone live action. Marvel's also gone animated. And DC has gone animated. But yet Star Wars sticks with the animated. They are not going live action. Mainly because I think the budget alone, <laughs> when you could deal with creature effects. Oh, oh Jan, I'm sorry. I didn't know Disney was really, you know, uh, cash they're, strapped. Well, that's why they're, they're doing really that hurting. bake sale for well, the... <laughs> <laughs> Dis- that Disney bake sale. I mean, seriously, uh, what is Disney like? You know, fifty something billion in revenue. I mean, come on. I don't know. They don't call me back. So. And d- and do you know they're still not? Uh, the one thing I would love to see is an old Republic live action series on Netflix. Yes. Uh, of course, that won't happen because Disney didn't. They broke off their deal with Netflix. But you know what I'm saying though is is uh, an older, more adult oriented type of show centered around the old republic with lightsabers and space battles and all that fun stuff why not why not okay okay well okay then all right all right so with that being said we we got to talk about james cameron here oh here uh, we go yeah oh, lord all right so james cameron let's talk about who this guy is okay this is not he michael made bay. a movie in eight years this is not michael bay this is james cameron he is a well-respected director he holds the top two spots on the worldwide box office. For now. For Avatar and Titanic. As long as you don't adjust for inflation. 
Give it a few months. <laughs> give, um, it a, give it a couple of, give it this weekend, more likely. I'm just saying, all right, you've got to look at his background and his resume. He's a three-time Oscar winner. He directed Terminator 2, Aliens. Which he kind of ripped off of Harlan, Harlan well, Nelson, he ori- by the he way. He directed the original Terminator as well. The original Terminator. He's <laughs> done, Terminator so, 3. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, but still, this guy is a well-respected, well-developed Hollywood director. That being said, this guy is hoping and almost praying for Avengers fatigue to set in. Oh, please get over yourself, Cameron. All yeah. right. I'm going to play something. Here we go. Go for it. You are stupid. 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 And don't forget, you are stupid. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, goodness. My goodness. Okay, so so here's so here's the thing. Um first of all, he compared his future Avatar sequels, by the way, to The Godfather. <laughs> and that they're gonna be just that good. It's a good thing so, I wasn't drinking water at that yeah, point. Now be now be careful when you roll your eyes, make sure they don't, you know, roll too much. Here's the actual quote. He said, quote, I'm hoping we'll start getting Avenger fatigue here pretty soon. Not that I don't love the movies, it's just come on guys, there are other stories to tell besides Hyper gonadal males without families doing death defying things for two hours and wrecking cities in the process. It's like, oi. Oh, Let me say okay. this he isn't wrong. All right, now bear with, bear with me for a second here. Just about every Marvel movie, with minor exceptions, is about person chases MacGuffin. I'm sorry. Man chases MacGuffin, gets the MacGuffin, beats the bad guy, game over. That's a bad. Well, that, that that I mean. The, the thing is, when it comes to most of the the Marvel villains, aside from Loki and probably uh, Red Skull, we haven't had a major threatening villain. Not not until this until uh, to Thanos. Right yes, Goose. You, you you look like you want to opine. On Go something. ahead. Has he never seen Terminator or Terminator 2 or Terminator 3 or Terminator Salvation or fun- Terminator Genesis? Well, the funny thing, funny thing about him, and this is where a lot of uh, controversy comes in with Cameron, a lot of uh, Terminator was uh, influenced by uh, a couple of Harlan Ellison stories. Well, but everything's influenced by something. Uh, true, but still. There's not an original idea left. Not since, not since I mean, really, Shakespeare. I mean, let's look at Avatar. That was Pocahontas in, in space. space. But at the same time, I'm just saying, he ain't wrong about how the movies are repetitive. So They are. What, what, what's Captain America First Avenger hey, about? Hey, 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 hey. What, what's that about? Get the Tesseract. Okay. Well, that was also a World War II. It's also drama. about defeating the Nazis. Yeah. Yeah, but that wasn't Captain America's job. Captain yes, America's was. no. Yeah, was. Captain America's job was to be PR. No. Well, okay, but in the when he actually fought the Nazis, it was fighting Hydra. He didn't fight the Nazis. He fought Hydra to get the Tesseract to win World War II. You are he right. wasn't in it to win World War That's II. He was in it to get Dave. the Tesseract. You say that with Captain America, right? Right, right here, right there. Yeah, yeah pretty much. Still, okay. What, what's what's the? Um, give me give me another Marvel movie. What, what's the point? Spider Man Homecoming. Okay. What's the point there? What, what are they Spider trying to do? Ma- Spider Man and Tony developing a relationship after Civil War. No. And yes. and nope. Tony trying to get to know Aunt May a little better. Nope. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah okay. That, give, give her that, but at the same time, maybe she's the MacGuffin. <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, true. Uh, but at the same time, you know, Aww. it's it's Peter trying to learn what it's like to be a, a hero. And then the vulture shows up, and it's him trying to defeat the vulture. Because right. he has the MacGuffin everyone's trying to get. It, it, the, the Marvel movies tend to be just a little repetitive. That being said... You tend to be... That being, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> <laughs> that being said... Yeah, Cameron's a little off base here. And I, I gotta say, probably because he's just a little... Maybe he's a little jelly... Just, just, little just a, little. a little jelly. Okay, he could make a good movie at least once every three years. That's he true. hadn't made a movie since two thousand nine, two thousand ten, and before that it was nineteen ninety six. Yeah, and before that it was. Well, no, th- he did direct Terminator three, right? Yes. So that was in the early two thousand. Yeah, and he also did True Lies with Schwarzenegger. But that was in the nineties. That was yeah. like before Titanic. Okay, to be fair, uh, he does have a movie come out this year. Alita, Battle Angel. That that. Wait, wait. Up. Is that going to be about somebody chasing something? Uh, I don't uh-huh. know. I haven't seen it. Just based yes. on that title. So, uh, I'm 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 not sure there. But Good I'm Lord. I'm just saying that he doesn't have a movie coming out this year. 
it, it just Guardians Two is there. Guardians of the Galaxy. I would agree with you. The first one. Yeah. Uh, yeah the first. But the, the second first, one is a little different. Yeah. The first one is about the MacGuffin. And uh, the all right, everyone's trying to get the Infinity Stone. Right. That's right? the first one. The second one is a little different until you realize that Peter's the MacGuffin. Everyone's trying to get him. Yeah. And then um, in Civil War. Civil War was more of a. Well, actually, Winter Soldier, I would say, was kind of different. That, yeah, that, that was more of a spy. Iron Man 3 was different. Very. Um, but, but the Civil War, that was... Hulk was different because he was the MacGuffin. Well, yeah, yeah, that's true. Iron well, Man 3, though, they already had the MacGuffin, and it was about trying to stop them from using the MacGuffin. Yeah. And, well, then, well, th th and then Thor Ragnarok. That was very different. That was, that was different. I'll, I'll go with that. But Thor, the first one... Was, and the second one. Was MacGuffin. Thor 2, MacGuffin. So they tend to get a little repetitive. So I'm just putting this out there. James Cameron isn't exactly wrong when it comes to that. And they are a tad repetitive. That being said, though, we love these movies. Ooh, who, yeah. who cares? We throw down money. Who who gives a, a, a green Hulk's behind if we love these movies? We love these movies. We'll, right. throw, a link to his, uh, we'll throw a link to what we know about his Lita movie in the chat here in yeah. a little bit. Yeah, which is kind of creepy looking, but I'm intrigued because, uh, again, I do respect James Cameron as, as, an, as a director. He's done some wonderful things. Right. Say what you want about Titanic, but that movie is visually really good considering the amount of props, actual working props that he used. They built the actual Titanic on a soundstage well, filled the, with water. He did the Abyss. And he did the okay, Abyss. The Abyss was good. Yeah, he did, he did Aliens. The, he did the looks, Abyss, Aliens. Well, the aliens was great. Avatar was visually breathtaking. I mean, that, man, yeah. that man pushed the envelope visually more than Lucas did. Yes. Think about that for a minute. Right. So I do respect Sam, him for that. Sam but, Worthington needs to find a new expression. But you know. but we love these movies. Who cares? The characters are fun. The MacGuffins are, okay, all right, yeah, repetitive, but we've been there. We like to go after them. Who cares? We like these movies. Give me a break. So that will go ahead and that will wrap it up here. If you want to tweet at us, find us at GYGO underscore radio. You can shoot me an email at Dave, the host, at GoodYourGeekOn.org. For Goose, for Minion, and for myself, I want to thank our sponsors, Laser Legend, Dragon's Lair, Alamo Ranch, and The Mailing Spot. Thank you for listening. Be excellent to each other, and make sure to get your geek on every single day. Good night, everybody.